Thermodynamics and Thermal Expansion Questions to ponder What happens to solids or liquids at the micro level when temperature increases? What is the coefficient of linear expansion? Why are there expansion joints and bridges? What happens to a hole or opening in a material as the temperature rises? And how do some thermostats work? So starting off, we're looking at thermodynamics uh, in solids right now. And if we had a solid material here, and we could go down to the micro level and, and see atoms connected with these electrical forces here, creating a uh, solid structure. If we had uh, atoms or molecules hitting this solid uh, and delivering some kinetic energy, in other words, transferring heat here, uh, it would cause these atoms to vibrate. When this atom started to move, it would tug on the, the neighboring atoms because the electrical forces, and it would cause them to start jostling. As more and more uh, nearby atoms came and hit the surface here, causing that heating, these atoms would start, start to jostle more and more and move around more and more. So if we visualize any one of these atoms jostling around here, causing other atoms in its vicinity to jostle around, they would need a little more elbow room, if you will. And uh, they would start to uh, create a little bit greater average distance between themselves and the other atoms. They would stay connected through the electrical forces, but uh, all of these vibrations would cause the overall material here to kind of expand in size. So we'd have a greater length here than we previously had down here. So that micro level analysis, when we come to a macro level here, and now we have a, a, a strip of material here, a particular length. Um, if we increase the temperature from, uh, by adding heat here from T0 to T1, um, then this new material would actually get to be a little bit longer. It would get a little bit wider too, but we're just going, going to look at only one dimension right now. So this material would actually get a little bit longer here. And how much it got longer would depend, obviously, on uh, the change in temperature that it experienced. It would also depend on the original length, because as these uh, atoms meet, need, or these atoms need more and more elbow room here, if there are more of them that need more elbow room, then the overall length would increase because of or dependent upon how long the material was. And then this third factor is called the coefficient of thermal expansion. And that depends on the material itself. Different materials, different solids will expand and different liquids will expand uh, at different rates depending on uh, the, type of the type of atom that they are, the type of molecule that they are. So we find this usually experimentally. And it's kind of like how much, you know, different atoms need different elbow rooms because of their size uh, and so forth. Uh, so you can kind of think of it that way. So there we have it. The total expansion here, delta L, is going to be equal to the coefficient of thermal expansion times the length of the original material and then times how much that original material uh, uh, how much is temperature increased. So the new overall length from one end to the other end here is simply L naught plus the delta L here or L naught plus uh, the alpha L naught times delta T is the new overall length. Before we go on much further let's uh, explain that there there is a difference between uh, degrees cel Celsius and degrees Kelvin, uh, this Kelvin scale, uh, and see how they're related to one another here. Uh, degrees Celsius is based on uh, zero being the, the location where either ice melts going this way or water freezes going this way. And uh, each degree Celsius was the how big a degree Celsius is determined uh, by taking the difference in the melting or freezing temperature and the boiling temperature of water and taking that amount and dividing it into 100 uh, degrees. And then that creates each degree Celsius. Now, if we continue, we, if we saw uh, ice here 
eh, the atoms would still, the water molecules would still be jostling and still be jostling, but they'd be slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And if we could slow those molecules down until they stop moving, we would get to a theoretical limit called absolute zero. Of course, we can't stop molecules from moving, so we can never get there. But if we followed the trajectory down to that point, we could find a theoretical point called absolute zero. And that would be 273 degrees below the point where water would freeze. And so uh, the degrees Kelvin is based on that absolute zero being zero and then going up from there. So in with uh, with a Kelvin scale, water freezes at 273 degrees Kelvin and boils at 373 degrees Kelvin. So, in other words, if I want to translate, a degree Kelvin is just 273 degrees more than every degree uh, Celsius. So if it's 20 degrees outside in Kelvin, it would be 293 degrees. Likewise, if you're going to go to Celsius from Kelvin, you have to subtract 273 degrees. For our work with thermal expansion, you don't really need to worry about this, though, because it is a change in temperature. And the change in temperature between Kelvin and Celsius, since the degree amounts are the same, a change in temperature uh, would be the same for either scaling. So here we are. We arrive at our first problem we're going to attempt here. We have a steel railroad track right here that uh, we don't want to buckle like these have buckled. Um, so it's 8 meters long at, at uh, negative 20 degrees Celsius. And then the railroad track is expected to range between that negative 20 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. The coefficient of thermal expansion for steel is 12 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Kelvin. And so the question is, how much will the track length change over this temperature range? So pause the video here and give this uh, problem a try. And then come on back when you're ready to see how you did. Well, let's see how you did. Um, starting off, like uh, these were our two, this is our track at 20 degrees. Celsius or negative 20 degrees Celsius and this is our track at uh, 40 degrees Celsius we know that it will expand between those two so using our equation for thermal expansion here we take the coefficient of thermal expansion right here 12 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Kelvin and multiply by 8 meters that's the length of the original track here and then multiply by 60 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature change here. And when we multiply all that through, we get 0 0.0058 meters or 0.58 centimeters is how much that eight meter track would expand over that temperature range. Now let's talk about thermal expansion if we had a hole in a material. So to understand this best, because the, the typical misconception is if, if you had a hole in a material, that this material would expand this way and it would all expand into the hole and actually make the hole smaller. But that's not what happens. What happens if you look at the overall material, this material expanding when it went from one temperature to a higher temperature over here, if it expanded, it would expand and get longer this way and it would expand to get wider this way. So if I marked off the hole that I was interested in here, we would see that the hole would actually expand here. In other words, let's go ahead and cut a hole out. And when this material expands from here to here, we can, we can see that this hole size was this amount before. And now the new hole size is actually larger. So to find out how much it expanded, I would just use this equation in those two different directions. I'd use it in this direction first, and then I could use it in this direction here, and I could see the overall area expansion. If we apply that concept of area expansion to volume expansion, we can uh, take this 
in all three dimensions, and we could create a new equation for volume expansion of, uh, of a solid or a liquid. And if we do that volume expansion here, um, what we would find out is if we took the original volume times a change in temperature and multiplied it by the coefficient of volume expansion, a new symbol beta for that, that uh, we would get how much the overall volume would have changed. Now it's interesting that uh, this volume expansion beta is approximately equal to three times the uh, linear expansion of the material. And that kind of makes that makes sense because the volume is expanding in three dimensions. And so the volume coefficient accounts for those three dimensions of linear expansion by being approximately equal to that. So another way to look at it is volume expansion can be equal to three times the linear expansion times the original volume times the change in temperature. Um, bimetal, bimetallic strips are uh, quite interesting and useful and uh, uh, in this case what we do is we take material like copper and iron and at room temperature we uh, glue them together or uh, uh, solder them together and then cut them the same length. And then when we do that, if we increase the temperature here, when they're, uh, un if, they're un if they were unbonded, we would see that the copper would expand uh, more greatly than the iron would. They would both expand, but the copper would expand at a greater rate than the uh, iron would. When we bond them together and kind of like gluing them together, then what ends up happening here, since the copper expands faster than the iron, is that the material will actually bend here. Uh, and uh, that bimetallic strip will bend. So if we tie it down here and, if, and fix it in a particular location and then heat it up, it'll bend away from that location. The next video will show this quite dramatically. We will heat a bimetal strip. A bimetal strip consists of two strips of different metals bonded to each other. As you heat the bimetal strip, the two different metals expand at different rates. This causes the metal strip to curl. Many thermostats employ a bimetal strip to operate. If we take the cover off the thermostat, we'll see a small metal coil, which is actually a bimetal strip. That bimetal strip is attached to a vial containing mercury and two electrodes. The mercury provides electrical contact between the two electrodes. As the temperature in the room changes, the coil of the bimetal strip either coils or uncoils. As it does so, it tilts the vial and the mercury makes contact or breaks contact with the electrodes. This turns the furnace on or off. And as you saw in that last video, uh, you, we can get this bimetallic strip to cause this uh, mercury tube to bend and cause conduction and turn a heater on. And this is another illustration of that if you wanted to pause it, the video and check that out more closely. Um, but it also can work in a regular thermometer here where we fix the bimetallic strip a particular location and as the temperature increases or decreases this coil will curl more or less creating this needle which is tied to the coil to either go down or go up depending on how much the bimetallic strip bends and so we can create a thermometer using a bimetallic strip as well. So hopefully you uh, will be able to answer these questions now. What happens to solids or liquids at the micro level when temperature increases? What is the coefficient of linear expansion? Why are there expansion joints in bridges and of course in railroads too? What happens to a hole or opening in a material as the temperature rises? And how do thermostats and even some uh, thermometers work? Scratch has a parting idea for you. And I hope you have expanded your pursuit for continuous improvement.